there's this idea, I remember when I first read uh, Richard Foster's book, uh, Celebration of Discipline, and I really read it, and not that Foster would recommend this at all, but I got so excited because I thought I was going to get something, some great spiritual euphoric feeling out of practicing these things. And in, in fact, when I fasted, I was just simply hungry, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, fasting doesn't feel good. And irritated, you know, and, uh, and these kinds of things. It's totally misnamed, right? Like, fa- <laughs> we ought to call it slowing. I Slow. mean, fasting just... <laughs> It's mis- yeah. It makes you crabby and not effective. What are we supposed to feel? I mean, I want to, de- you know, perhaps decrease some expectations about spiritual practices. What are you supposed to feel when you're fasting or when you're almsgiving or when you're visiting the poor? And, and you want to talk about creating a very messy life. It's working with marginalized people will make a mess of your life very, very quickly. When we, we, would, we might even go into it expecting it to clean up our lives, that mm-hmm. we're doing the spiritual thing for God and everything's going to be great. Do you contend with that idea? Well, I don't know that there is a feeling that we're supposed to have in these practices. And sometimes one does feel euphoric, right? I mean, I've occasionally felt euphoric. Um, and it, it would be depressing to live an entire spiritual life and never have those moments, right? <laughs> Look, we have a range of emotions in the rest of our lives. Why would we expect anything less than a range of emotions in our life with God, right? I think so many people do. I think that's why they would go into the spiritual discipline. They because they are things. expecting to be, to have conflict relieved. And go instead, to therapy. It's, go to therapy. Therapy seems like a good way to have that. So spiritual disciplines is not, not therapy. therapy. <laughs> yeah. um, well, in my own life, I'll just say that although I have experienced many emotions, I would say the most The emotion that I now know to expect will recur is boredom. Really? What Um, do you do with that? Well, and I've I've said that I hate being bored. Yeah. Um, So I actually think in my own life, I I don't know if this is true for anyone else, but in my own life, I feel that part of what God is calling me into in these disciplines is precisely the experience of being bored and that God may be saying to me, um, just be here with me in this boredom, which makes you really uncomfortable but don't go distract yourself with something more pleasing or more entertaining. Um, Merton, and I'm sure Thomas Merton was not the first person to say this, but Merton once wrote um, that when in a given spiritual practice you become bored, that doesn't mean stop doing it and pick up something new. The boredom means go deeper. That's actually God's way of inviting us deeper into the thing, um, which is scary. I mean, it's scary uh, to be invited deeper with God, right? I, I, I kind of like God where he is. I like myself unchanged. I mean, simultaneously, I'm desperate to be closer to God and I'm desperate to change, but do I really want to change? Well, only sometimes, right? 